Hey, how's it going? It's me, Bethan, and thank you for clicking on this video, which is the first video I've put up in about six months, as per usual, but the reason I'm filming today is because there is a lot going on in my life personally, as well as for the wider CF community in the UK. So there's going to be a lot to film uh, very soon, and I want to be able to share that journey, having given some context beforehand. Uh, I get a lot of thought to the reason I don't upload videos and one of the reasons is the burden of editing. So for the first time ever, I'm going to attempt to not overthink this too much, just speak to you guys. I <laughs> I know I'm going too fast already, so I'm just going to slow it down. I've got a cup of tea that was actually sent to me in lockdown. It has my sisters on it, it's Melanie, Serena, Rhiannon and Beth. So it's super cute um, and that was a gift from one of my sisters that says sisters forever never apart maybe in distance but never at heart so that's lovely okay where to begin <sighs> i suppose i'm gonna start with the good news as far as a health update update goes oh, i'm sorry see i'm nervous i'm stuttering the good news is that uh, after lockdown eased in the UK, I travelled home to London and on the 31st of June, I was scrolling through my Instagram, it was a completely normal day and I read the news that Caftrio, known in the US as Tricafter, had been approved. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is a CF wonder drug. It is actually life-changing and I'm going to try and explain to you in words what this drug means to me but it's it's not really possible okay <laughs> so as someone with a li limited life expectancy I had just never seen myself having children having a real relationship getting married having a career and suddenly all of this is possible for me. It is like being reborn. I, I have a whole new life ahead of me that I didn't know, I didn't know was ha gonna happen. And the coolest part is that my boyfriend was staying with me at the time, Dylan, I'm just gonna refer to him as Dylan from now on. And I had actually been talking to him about this drug just a couple days before, completely coincidentally. And I was telling him, like, oh yeah, it would be crazy, it would be insane. But I don't expect to have that, you know, for years and years and years and years. So for this just days later, for it to be bought by, you know, the NHS, it's so out of the blue. It probably isn't that out of the blue for people who were campaigning for that. So thank you, you know, if you were on that journey. I, I wasn't really, I was fairly oblivious to this whole process. So it seemed like it was completely random. I'm rambling now. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm rambling. Um, but what it does is, as opposed to treating the symptoms of CF, which drugs have done for the last however many years, 30 years or something, this actually treats the root cause. And in doing so, slows down the progression of the disease hugely. Um, there's been people I've seen who have had up to a 40% increase in their lung function, which is just insane. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually been really exciting seeing everyone in America taking it because it's meant that I can, I can follow their journeys and they're doing so well and it's been so miraculous that I'm even that bit more excited because I, I'm not going into it blind. I can see it works and I'm sure it's going to work for me. Uh, it's worth noting that this actually can only treat 90% of people with CF, which is great because the previous drugs didn't treat 90%. Um, I think the previous drugs, which were um, Calideco and Simkevi, the, oh, I'm trying to think, um, and I'm aware that I'm going to try not to edit this, so I don't want to um, blank too much, but... I think they treated 60 to 70 percent something like that please don't quote me but the point is it treats more people not that 10 percent yet but 
um, I'm sure they're working on it. So fingers crossed that comes out really soon. If you're part of that 10%, amazing things happen apparently. So don't lose hope just yet. Okay, so that's the good news. That is literally life changing. I'm going to be around way longer than I expected. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with my life now. And it's amazing. The not so good news. Okay, to tell you this part of the story, I'm going to have to take you back to 2017. Seems super long, but bear with me, I promise I'll be quick. In 2017, I was told that I had a bacteria in my lungs called Mycobacterium abscessus. What's dangerous about this is that it's an antibiotic resistant bug, referred to as a superbug. Uh, the clue's kind of in the name there, but it is so dangerous because it is not treated by conventional antibiotics. That's a real bummer, isn't it? Because how, how do you treat it if it's antibiotic resistant? How you treat it is by trying to hit it with about six different antibiotics at the same time in the hope that you can confuse the bacteria enough to die. Uh, as you can imagine, our human bodies don't like that amount of medication. <laughs> so when I'm having it, I, for one, I lost my voice because one of the antibiotics is inhaled. It's not your typical inhaled antibiotic. It was uh, amikacin, I, I think, which not isn't designed to be nebulized. It's usually given via IV, um, but they just put it in a nebulizing solution. So my nose was bleeding, I was coughing up blood, and I lost my voice. Not, not cool, it, it wasn't great. Um, the other things that happened, you vomit a lot, it's hard to tolerate. So then there was a lot of weight loss, a loss of appetite. I was advised before starting the treatment, I started it in the summer and they told me I should defer the year of college. And at the time I said, no, I don't think so. I'm going to stick it out, I'll be fine. And by November I did have to drop out because as I've explained, I was mute. I was vomiting, I was coughing up blood, I was a right state. So I did end up having to leave you, um, college. That was all very sad. And the treatment was supposed to last for two years. It had gone so amazingly for me though, <laughs> despite it being quite traumatic and awful, it was so effective that after just one year, I was able to come off it. And that was awesome because I started it, I started in the August, of my final year of college and then I got to finish it the following September which is when I had just moved to Bristol for university. You may be wondering, run, wondering, wondering how I managed to do go to university having not managed my final year of college. What I did is I ended up doing just one A-level. Um, so my original college wouldn't take me back but the school at the hospital entered me for that one sociology A-level. Combined with the ASs I had done the previous summer, got me enough UCAS points to then do a foundation year at uni. Sorry, I thought someone was coming, but they're not. Okay, so uh, I got to Bristol, I got to stop this treatment in time for uni, and that was great. This is when the YouTube channel started really. So you may have seen if you watch my videos, but if not, I'll give you a brief. I've been documenting my health journey since being at uni. I caught pneumonia, freshers, yeah, that was a whole ordeal. You know, it wasn't great, but the superbug was fine. And that's the main thing because every infection I had was able to be treated with like regular antibiotics, IV antibiotics. And then, um, this brings us to a year ago. So I've been at uni for one year, it's August, I'm in the hospital for what I think is a regular tune up, and I was told that the superbug's back. I was devastated, <laughs> very upset, and I thought that meant I was gonna have to start this treatment straight away. I thought, what's this gonna mean for me? What's gonna mean for uni? All of that stuff is going through my head. I then thought of starting it, so I thought of starting immediately. That was pushed back to November because I had gone to the clinic. We said, okay, we'll bring you in, we'll do it. That didn't happen. And ultimately, I think that was the right decision because at the time I was responding to regular IVs, which suggested that although we know the superbug is present, 
maybe it's not that causing the problem. So I haven't treated it. And here we are. So I find out about this cafeteria in July and in my head, I'm thinking that this means I will no longer have to go ahead with the NCM treatment. That stands for non tuberculosis mycobacterium, by the way. So I thought I wasn't gonna have to have this nasty, um, intense treatment because the cafeteria was gonna fix me. It was gonna fix my lungs. And if I have healthy lungs, the bacteria can't survive and all of this stuff. In July, I was admitted to hospital for a tune-up, just a regular tune-up. I had a two week course of IVs. I did one week in the hospital, finished the second week at home. In that time I had an x-ray, which was weird because it didn't look great. And I felt fine. So I thought, well, I don't know what that is at the bottom of my lung, but it doesn't look cool. We'll follow up in a month. Didn't think much of it. But I've been getting this chest pain all throughout lockdown. It's been getting worse and worse, more frequent, more painful. And it's in a very particular place on the base of my right lung. Just about three weeks after leaving the hospital, maybe even two weeks, I don't know, three weeks, I don't know, I had to email and say, hey, really sorry, but I'm in a lot of pain. Do you think we could bring this x-ray forward? Because the x-ray was scheduled for the 7th of September. And this was like beginning to mid-August. I wasn't gonna last that long. So they ordered an x-ray, I had an x-ray and then straight away ordered a CT scan and I thought, oh, that's interesting, that doesn't sound very good. Had a CT scan, in conclusion, the bug's there, it's spread, it's bad, and it needs to be treated. The conversation went something like this. Hey, the bug's there, um, but we should probably definitely treat it. And I said, oh really? Because I thought the calf trio would mean I didn't, it, I didn't need to do that anymore. And he said, no, that, it doesn't work like that. Oh no. This was my naivety. This is my bad. I, I should have been aware that this was always on the table. I, I wrongly assumed that the calf trio would fix me, fix everything and I wouldn't need to have it. That's my bad. And that brings us up to date. So basically, I will now be undergoing NCM treatment, uh, which is treatment for the non-tuberculosis mycobacterium, the abscessus. And it could really be any time. I did think it, well, yeah, it could be very soon, in the next few weeks probably. What this entails is a four to six week introduction, introductory period of IVs, probably in the hospital. For some people, you can start it in the hospital and then finish it at home. The problem with this treatment is that it is so intense that it's really hard to manage at home doing it, um, just because of the um, nausea, um, loss of appetite, vomiting. For me, last time I was on it, it caused such problems with things like low blood pressure um, that I passed out in the corridor once. Um, a couple of days after being discharged, I had a seizure. There's, it's just not cool. So um, what this means for me is that I probably will be in the hospital for four to eight weeks during a global pandemic. It's gonna be shocking. You can't have any visitors at the hospital I'm going to because it's had a recent lockdown. <sighs> I'll have you guys. So there's that and I do plan on documenting this journey. I'm not gonna be very well, uh, as I've explained, but I'm gonna try and film it. And yeah, I don't wanna dr draw this out any more than I have to. So I think I'm gonna end the story there. So I will see you soon for my hospital per <laughs> hospital admission. It's going to be a long one, but it's going to be fine. Oh, and other non-CF related life news. I start uni online on Monday, so that's going to be great. I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. Uh, I'm going to have to do that in the hospital while I'm not well. Oh, yeah. So last time I had to defer the year of college and I'm planning on still trying to do uni, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see. It's gonna be online anyway, so I feel like I should be able to do it. 
fingers crossed. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching this complete ramble. Sorry if you hate the rambling. It's my first non-edited video in this style. But see you later, alligators. Have a good day.